So I will do a usual 10 minute introduction for our new viewers. Uh, Jim started channeling about uh, six months ago, six months ago, and uh, we, uh, I was lucky to be contacted by the aliens. Um, we are speaking to Yael Grace, uh, to Pleiadian Errands, to Pleiadian Blues, to Lirans, and there was a brief conversation with an Arcturian, there was a brief conversation with an Andromedan. And we have a nice uh, set of conversations, we had a nice set of conversations <coughs> with an angel. Uh, of, of the third level of the God's realm and we had a nice conversation, several conversations. They are not very nice, they were pretty tough, but we had intense conversations with uh, an ancient God which is a human spirit, hu oh, not human spirit, ditch it out, an ancient God, a group spirit, non-human spirit, nothing, nothing about humans. <coughs> His name is L E L, and it was known in many cultures and um, it was very important and he had a very important message for us. Uh, total we had about 30-40 sessions with Jim and originally they were recorded on audio and we are transcribing them and publishing them on our site humancolony.org and now we started doing the sessions uh, videos so we just can publish them right away. So check our YouTube channels, we have another maybe 7-8 videos with uh, channel sessions. Uh, we are lucky to be uh, to be speaking with a person, a Yale Gray, his name is Dizyakabo Dizduda, shortly Dizdu, who is in charge uh, for the first open contact. Uh, Yale uh, Grays were selected by others to represent <coughs> the aliens in the first contact. And the reason for that is that they're close to humans, they are our descendants, descendants meaning sons and daughters, they are have our DNA recent infusion of human DNA. They were created by Zeta Grays, by, by hybridizing Zeta Gray DNA and human DNA, recent human DNA. So they are our descendants, they are grateful for us giving, uh, giving them their uh, our DNA and they are very motivated to help us. So that's why they were chosen to represent the aliens, the friendly aliens in the first contact. Uh, we in communication with friendly extraterrestrials, friendly aliens, uh, the alliance is called Gurk Fitnir, uh, and they're helping us in many ways, helping the Earth Project. They're preparing for open contact, and now the turn is for humans to invite them. They don't want to come without invitation. So what happened um, uh, during the Reiki session half a year ago, uh, I knew already that aliens are around me, and they wanted to communicate with me. And when they came through gym, they started speaking, I wasn't surprised, and first thing I said, take me up there and I will visit you and we'll talk. And we'll help you and we'll help, you will help us. And then I developed that idea writing books and letters to them electronically and publishing them and sending to them and sending them to Jim and Jim sent it to them mentally saying, let's create a colony up there, we will take us and we will explain to you how we live here and we'll do contact up there and then we'll broadcast what we learned to the humanity. We have to create a new alien aware human culture and that will transform the humanity to the better. And all the secrets, all the evil plans will be exposed because it's all transparent from up there. They all can see that. So that was the plan to save in the humanity and uh, the plan was implemented in May last year. They started taking people, not me unfortunately, but they took others. And today, the, uh, uh, now, by now, there was about 200 people who were taken there, voluntary, all volunteers, and returned back. Normally they don't take people more than for two weeks in a time. So you are absent from here only for five minutes but then you go there and you see and they stretch this five minutes to two weeks and you return and they allow people to remember what happened there. Uh, they visit their alien ships, sometimes they visit other planets, they have tours to other planets. Um, there are four colonies right now or even five, I'm not sure. Four colonies and um, 
they're doing good. They visit, they meet with aliens every day. They live in nice quarters designed for humans, and these quarters are are comfortable. They have alien technologies, so they have replicators and things of that sort. They have communicators. They have holographic projections, and the biggest achievement of the colonies is that they developed telepathy. So they invite telepaths to come there, practice their telepathy. They do telepathy. They do uh, group sessions and they meditate and the aliens talk to them telepathically. And they talk also through sound, vocally, but they also learn to talk telepathically. And when you go from vocal communication to telepathic communication, it's like going from tiny modem or typing to a broadband where you can send tons of information. So uh, deception is much more difficult, so it's almost impossible when you're a telepath. So telepathic societies are much more open. People are much more open to each other. Deception is not possible. Confusion is possible, but not deception. The aliens have very difficult time understanding humans. They are uh, understand the physiology, medicine, the language they easily can translate, but understanding the emotions, understanding our separation, understanding our diversity, uh, especially difficult is the politics, obviously the politics. So, uh, so they talk to humans trying to understand more and more, and they learn fast, relatively fast. We are vastly different from the aliens. That's why it's so difficult for them to understand us. So the main work is finding common grounds, explaining how we are, and understanding them. They also want people with psychic abilities and telepathic abilities. Again, they want to assemble nice working teams, so not only telepaths are welcome. Uh, artists, musicians, video video movie makers, YouTube YouTubers, YouTube bloggers, any creative people are, are welcome because uh, it's a big a big part of uh, you know the work in the colony is to understand them, for them to understand us and for us to understand them. Scientists are also welcome if if they're not liars. All right. So you can write email to them and I will post here the email which is Sign up to go at gmail.com. Sign up to go at gmail.com. You also can look up at the website. It's just a one page website right now. Uh, humancolony.org. Humancolony.org. And if you have questions, you can email me. And here is my email. It will be ms204 at gmail.com. No, oh, 204057 at gmail.com. Yes, and what do you write in the application? Uh, it's a, you know, it can be short, it can be long, they can read pretty fast. Don't worry about that. It can be very long. Um, first, you have to really decide for yourself if you want to go. Obviously, you don't have much information, and I don't have all the information. Uh, understand that they wouldn't take everybody. They are picking and choosing best what they think is, is best for the colony. Right now it's it's run by them. Hopefully soon the colony will be running itself by itself. Or it will be a mixed combination of humans and aliens who look at the candidates and uh, invite them. They can look you up easily. You don't don't have to provide your name. If you want to, you know, to keep your name secret, it's fine. You can use nickname. They can trace it easy, easier, easier than you know, secret services. They can. The aliens are very advanced in this way. They, you know, as long as the mail comes to that mailbox, they will, they will trace you. They have that ability. They don't understand you well, but uh, they, they can trace people. I know that for sure. Um, so name is not important. Uh, your inner desire to go. No, don't just go because you are you hate humans. You have to go because you love humans. That's also important. So, so they asked me to help, and that's my way of that's my way of helping you, uh, helping you and them to uh, to bond together. 
So they obviously need more volunteers and they need best of humans. They, their major disappointment, I'll tell you, yes, which one is that, is that humans are selfish. Even the best ones of us are so, what is the word, limited, selfish, harmed, damaged, that we cannot think globally. We want best for us and we can't help aliens to help the humanity as a whole. They want global thinkers, telepaths, nice people. All right, so if you are one of those or, or all of them together, um, send an email. Obviously. Um, so I invite those of you who want to volunteer to go tell you know how for how long can you go and uh, and what you can contribute and how my how how sure are you that you want to go and then hopefully they will have lots of applications to choose from and they pick best teams up there bring them up there and uh, create a miracle to basically save the earth and create a new 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 human civilization which will be just Trans our, help transforming our civilization to a new evolutionary step. So who is who has come today? Lakesh. Who is Lakesh? Lakesh is the blue from a, a known planet, but he, they have three large planets in the Pleiadian system of 200 stars. Mm -hmm. So, but we don't know which star they're around, so they uh -huh. don't tell us. And Lakesh in uh, human language means another you, another you, which, which is a nice name to have. He chose another you, which is very cool. So. Uh huh. Uh, and he is on his planet. He ne they, the blues, this kind of blues, they never, they are known as the blues. They never leave their planet or three planets. They stay there in astral project here. They travel around the galaxy just by astral project. They are very peaceful. They are not making mm -hmm. any ties, any allies with any any others. That's right. And they're neutral, but they kind of help by channeling. Yes, they help by giving um, their opinions to other uh, species if they're asked. But they do not get involved in any uh, alliances. Tepe, Tepe came through. Tepe is one of the. Uh, Scientists on board the ship that's in the, going around the uh, North American continent, I guess, trying to help with the weather and seismic and different things in that way. Tepe, Tukur, and and these two are all on the same ship, so mm -hmm. they uh, look after our weather and stuff so that it doesn't become too extreme. Now, I guess they must have had their hands full this last week because it was like really 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 cold and they were supposed to have tempered it somewhat so that it wasn't even as cold as it was supposed to be so what what races are they <clears throat> oh uh, these do is uh yigil yigil great yep uh takar is a lyran and she's a about eight or nine feet tall nine feet tall and um who tipe it's a Pleiadian and he's... A tall Pleiadian from yes, planet Era, mm -hmm. the star Tageta. Right. Yes, Era. And how tall they are? Eight feet? Yeah, eight feet. Yeah, they're pretty big. Uh, the Yigil is the eight, smallest seven. of the three. <laughs> the Yigil is six feet, uh, <clears throat> Pleiadian, Erans are about seven or eight, and Lirans yeah. are nine. So... Uh, the greys look like greys, so Yael look like grey. Uh, Pleiadians look very much like humans, just taller and and healthier. Yes. And they have different colors of skin. They have they can change the color at will. They can they genetically modify themselves to absorb sunlight. So now they have a um, how do you call it a fashion fashion to be green. <laughs> It's in fashion to be green on arrow now, uh -huh. so. But they also can be blue and other colors. So. And the Lirans are cat cat people, feline humans, um, looking like lions, I guess. But you know, having the hum human human uh, 
stand up, stand uh, vertical appearance, you know, with the same thing. But uh, I would say maybe very much like Klinongs, a lot of hair. <laughs> yes, Takur has. I, I can't really see all the features, but I can see that she has hair from her face down to her chest. Anyway, so. All right. Why don't they mm. contact us? Why didn't open contact happen yet? Um. Because we're not ready, and they're not ready. Uh, there's so many uh, relative things that are happening. Things, relativity. Uh-huh. Um, Related. Yeah. So, I think they just have to find the right time and the right place. They have ideas of what to do, but they're just not sure. And they don't think that we're ready anyway. So, they're taking their time on that. So, why aren't we ready? Well... The word backwards sounds wrong. How about conservative? Conservative. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think they're just waiting for the right time the, for more people to become knowledgeable and and uh, for the light workers to do their thing to help uh, bring up the vibration of the earth as so well. So their prediction is that if they show up now, we'll have a major economic collapse now. Basically, if people realize that aliens are strong and they have weapons and uh, they don't attack us, that means that we are not in danger. So there is no reason to pay taxes to develop weapons here. So the whole economy based on trade of weapons and fuel may fall apart because the aliens might also have free energy. And uh, if humans drop the idea of weapons <clears> and <throat> they might share with us that technology. It's already on Earth. It's already been published, except that people who are in charge of Finances, they prefer to have the economy built on, on trade of oil because it makes them rich when they trade oil. Yes. And free energy would destroy their income from, um, from trading oil. Yes. And also, so if the military production of, uh, of uh, weapons goes, then the whole economy kind of has to change and um, the earth is not ready for that change yet. Right, exactly. And um, <clears throat> so they're holding off to make sure that everything, all the situation and circumstances are going to be just right. Because when it happens, it's going to be in multiple places, I'm sure. From, a, the, from what they have said, they're not just going to appear in one place. It's going to be... How many did they say? Ten or something? Yeah, it was quite a few. I don't remember how many. Yeah, around ten places. They want now <clears throat> to appear in ten places and and uh, speak in the appropriate languages and uh, in different countries and even do broadcasts in different languages. They would do appear on television. That was their plan. But right. the timing, so my understanding about the timing, they wait and they, they wouldn't want to be responsible for, for the destructions, for meltdown, economic meltdown, which might happen after their appearance. So they're delaying that until I think they will be they can't delay it anymore. If there is another danger which would come, then they would have to like they would have no choice other than, other than to show up. So there is our leaders have to be pressed against the wall to be to agree to that. They wouldn't do it by their own will until they really have to, and the aliens wouldn't do it by their own choice until they have to really show up in the open. But but they prepare. Everybody is preparing for that. So after that. After they appear, what will happen after that? Um, <clears throat> then they will uh, probably educate. That would be my next thought. Yeah, they're preparing. <clears throat> they would just show the people that they're not here for war intentions or for mm -hmm. a negative thing. But then I would think that uh, they would uh, start to educate on how to have a better life and world and tell us about the things that we're doing wrong, which we probably know, but they... They probably, the people that need to change would probably listen to them, <laughs> I would think. But we'll see. Yeah, the, the end goal is to have the Earth first ascend to the next dimension. Right. Second, to be a member of galactic community, to transform our economy, to become telepathic. These are main main goals for the next 200 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. What about ascension? Ascension is actually our evolution. Um, I know there's a lot of things written about Ascension I've, I've read, and they're, they're, they're sort of all over the place about what they think Ascension is. But what I, my understanding of Ascension is that 
this is the we are coming into a phase in humanity where we are changing and there's evidences of us actually rising in vibration rising in our telepathic abilities and becoming the next level of humanity which would be evolution and that is why so many of the species around our planet are observing because they want to they want to be a witness to this slow evolution it's not going to happen like overnight but they want to be witness to the how it comes about not that it hasn't come about in other planets but we're sort of unique in the universe as far as I understand um, we're very 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 diverse and for us to become the next level of ascension is going to be quite a feat and be quite a, a miracle. Why are we unique? Because <clears throat> we are so diverse. Um, there are many cultures in other planets that they've had their planet around so long they've, they've sort of connected a little bit more. Our planet has gone through so many diverse changes which some of their other planets have too but we've been on the earth and then the earth flips or something happens that, that destroys our uh, population and vegetation and stuff and we're starting all over again this time um, we're closer to uh, becoming part of the universe or galaxy than we ever were before so they want to make sure that our civilization doesn't get wiped out again so so after we ascend what would be different we would have fourth dimensional identities which means that there would be we would be have a tele, telepathy probably I'm thinking that telepathy is part of it and um, be able to ascend into a, a fourth dimensional world as well which I'm not sure after all, we ascend, yeah. no, after we ascend what would be different in our culture would the humans have bodies yes I'm sure would they have families I'm, I think so would they have governments? I think at least some government is necessary. Uh huh. So that's, but uh, you know, being at this point of the ascension, it's hard to say what it's going to look like at the end. The colonies were a big help to them because they learned firsthand from telepathic people what, how we think, do things, and why, why things are the way they are on our planet. And that really helped them to understand uh, uh, the human condition, basically. So, um, what else can I say about that? What do they do there? Well, on the colonies, the, the one colony is all uh, teaching telepathic, how to become telepathic. The second colony I forget what they're. I forget what the all the colonies do actually. Now <laughs> it's been a while. Since all right, they, they they develop the contact up there. Mm -hmm. You know, if they cannot come here because of all the troubles, they are not invited. They don't want to come and invited, and they don't want to disturb the economy. But but up there, they, they, they invite volunteers. So until this summer, they abducted people did hybridization, hoping to improve our genetics to make us telepaths. That, I mean, they wanted to help us, but one of the reasons they did abductions and hybridization program, they wanted to create a new or better species of human. And they succeeded partly in that. They created hybrids and planted them back. So they created and implanted a lot of hybrid people who, who are born humans, are growing in human culture, but they have special talents, including capability for telepathy. In the colonies, they do just the opposite. They take humans which are just talented humans with telepathic skills and teach them telepathy through meditation and and just you know being in in, in a surrounded being surrounded by in, in, immersed in telepathic culture they speak to them telepathically the humans have the opportunity to telepathically communicate to aliens who are born uh, with that capacity who, whose culture is already telepathic so they have now nine telepaths and few more who are promising and uh, the communication with first telepaths made them realize our potential. Basically, they understand that we are not hopeless as a species, and that 
They understand us much better. Yes. I don't know if they... Did you think they thought it, we were hopeless? I think so. Okay. They didn't say so, but... I'm, I'm, <laughs> they didn't say so, but that... Uh, yeah, but, but they sort of acted like that, yeah. But, 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 but then they say, now we know that you are not hopeless. So, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, infer that before that they thought that we are much... <laughs> now, now they say we are not hopeless 60%. Before that they were thinking that we are not hopeless 0% or maybe 3%, that sort of thing. But yeah, yes, chances do. are here. that they, they know the future. Oh, they, they are from different dimensions, so they can see the future only a few days in the front. Uh, but the higher there are the beings, there are multiple dimensions, the more they can see the future. And there are some which see very far. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, an honor to be visited by Buddha today. In Buddhism, how do you call the hand? I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe like that? I'm not sure. Yes. That, I'd have to look it up. Yeah, this uh, Tibetans... Is like that? I think no, that I, I don't know. No, Japanese do. And we thank Buddha for coming. That was nice. Thank you. Uh, we had Jesus last time. And it was... What can you say? I will stay... You know, we had Jesus, for real. And in the past we had visited, we have been visited by uh, ancient consciousness called L. L, yes. Go ahead. L means God in many human languages. Uh, Michael, Samuel, Elohim, a lot of, a lot of human words contain L in meaning God. And they are responsible for distribution of wealth. 99% <coughs> of our galaxy other civilizations are using them instead of money. They don't have money, they have El, who is responsible for fair and rational distribution of wealth and resources. Okay, that sounds right. And he said to us that he plans, he tries to work with our current system and it doesn't want him. And our civilization, our race, wouldn't survive if we continue this path. It's not news to us, but he says that it has been decided up there by this collective consciousness and I assume they do it with the permission or direction from the Creator. They are not the Creator, they are not Father God, but they are part of the Father God. Uh, it has been decided to melt down our economy 13 years from now in, 20, in the year 2027. And according to their calculations, predictions, if we go at the rate we are now, Half of human population, about four billions, will perish in uh, local violence and famine, mostly in big cities. We will have a lot of warnings and humans will be advised to leave the cities and go to safer rural areas to wait for about half a year until the, the uh, upheaval is down. That is unfortunate news. We have 13 years to fix that and to prepare for that and hopefully we'll reduce the suffering and the casualties from 50% to way lower percentage. But, but that's their plan and you know we pay right. attention to that because many of other aliens who we consulted with confirmed that this is for real. They are not joking and this is not a pretense. It's really their plan. But they, I think they gave it to us ahead of time so that we could actually help them uh, with the... To help uh, us. Yeah, so help them help us. So with the, uh, you know, to enlightenment of humanity and stuff. So yeah, that the, uh, So that it won't be so much destruction. So we're, we have 13 years to work on that. And I think that that could help a lot if people were starting to understand. So. My major hope is YouTube, from destruction of Earth to YouTube. YouTube is a free media, and television is not free media, but it can become. When the open contact happens, I ask my alien <coughs> friends to create as many videos as possible and broadcast them, sell them, g gift them to television networks, and have these hundreds of hours of, of videos broadcasted on Earth to awaken the humanity, to explain to humanity the truth. It's all about the truth. Many people on Earth know the truth, but many more don't. So for them to awaken to the truth, it takes, it takes television. Television is the key media now to mm -hmm. teach, educate, open eyes. And it is moving this way, but not fast enough. 
So the colony is colony number two creates videos. They humans come there, volunteer humans, professional video professional come and take interviews from aliens. They take about three interviews per day, and there are several crews doing that. Mm -hmm. And we learned today that they did already about two thousand hours of interviews. If part of that, say two hundred hours, is broadcasted to Earth, say interview with Greys, interview with Pleiadians, interviews with. Uh, Yegel with Arcturians, which Arcturians, I don't think they give a lot of interviews, but but uh, other aliens like reptilians, we have friendly reptilians, we have Andromedans who are helping, we have Galactic Federation of Light, Ashtar Command. If these interviews are broadcasted on Earth, and my goal, our goal is to help the aliens to become as popular as Beatles. <laughs> And then it will awaken the humanity. Beatles did more than any politician at their time to awaken the humanity. Now the aliens can do even better. Yeah, that's an interesting way to look at it. They can become popular. They can become feared or they can become popular. That's right. And they have a lot of capacity of doing that. They can read, not minds, but they can read a lot of things. They cannot and read minds. If they wanted to destroy us, they would have done so already. So, I know that they're friendly because of the way they handle things is just in a gentle way, in a gentle understanding. They try to be as understanding as possible. So, it's it's a relief to me that they're not out there working against us. Yeah, the good ones. Yeah, right. our friends. Yeah, there's bad ones out there too, but most most are good. Most of the ones which talk to us. Right. We are protected. We have. Uh, our friend fishing from Yale, he is protecting us from uh, intruders who are negatives. But the reptilians came to us. It was fun to talk to them. Thank you. For, come again. We'll talk. We'll be happy to talk to you. They again. were friendly reptilians. Yes. yes. I would do no. channeling during Reiki. That's how it started, and it worked great for us. Yes, it worked. It it started during um, a Reiki session here. I started hearing voices. Well, first of all, I sensed that we were being watched. Uh huh. And then a couple weeks later, I started getting voices about how to do Reiki better, and I listened to those, and I was going, uh-huh, uh-huh, and he's, he's saying, what, what are you, what's going on, <laughs> you know? So, uh, and then finally he started asking questions, so, and they started answering. And this do came first, and this do is uh, one of the people in the Yale who is authorized to formulate the plans for the first contact. And the Yells were selected, elected by other aliens to do the first contact because they are related to humans. They are our descendants in many ways. They are created from human DNA and Zeta gray DNA by Zetas and placed on their own planet. And they already evolved to the fourth, density, the fourth dimension while we are here in the third making it. So we are very happy things this do. And actually, Liney and other members of the site, thank you for the work you are doing on the, our climate project and our Earth axis, fixing our Earth axis wobbling. So they send love to you. Thank you, Dizdu. So we're very honored by you choosing us to speak and uh, we help as much as we can. It was a surprise for me because I didn't even know what channeling was when I started to do it. So then I was told what it was and, and I was I wrote, surprised. I wrote a book, before that I wrote a book uh, on channeling, mostly based on Bashar. We love Bashar. Bashar is best. Mm -hmm. uh, Bashar is a, channel, a channeled being from Sasani and now they're called Shakani. Shakani. Sh yes. They made it from the fourth to the fifth, to the fifth dimension. We, well, we are making it from third to the fourth. They are making it from the fourth to the fifth that already made it. So Bashar is talking from Shakani civilization. They're also it's hybrids between greys and humans from Earth. So they are sending you their things for uh, for be for giving them uh, for giving rise to them, right? For mm -hmm. making them, for giving our DNA to them. Mm -hmm. And we, I was lucky to, you know, Bashar once came through gym and I had a few words with him. It was very nice. So why do we do Reiki while, while channeling? Because we created a nice antenna, a nice antenna, and it works well for us. We kind of linked and, and 
Jim's and energy and my energy merge together to create, and we are Aquarians, as as we said, so that works well for for channeling. Yes. Now, money wise, we invite your donations. Uh, it's very easy to do that. Go to humancalling.org, click the donate button, and you donate through PayPal. If you're not set up with PayPal, send me a message. It's very easy to have email on the side, and there is a text box on the side, it's, or you send a comment, and I can contact you and get donations in any other way possible. We can even take Bitcoin. Bitcoins. Are you aware of Bitcoins? No. These are electronic money which are independent, barely independent from mainstream money, but this is electronic money which can be converted to mainstream money. Oh. Uh, what else? Um, Jim takes um, takes reservations for personal channeling sessions through yeah. Skype and telephone, yes. and he is now booked. Well, not fully booked, but I am partly some. booked. Yeah. Partly booked. So you can contact me through the site, and and then uh, I will get in con you in contact with Jim to to set up the channeling thing, mm -hmm. and we. Uh, would be happy, especially in this cold weather. Would be happy to go to other cities and uh, <laughs> hopefully in the in the south or in hot places and get some sun and give a, a channeling session to your people, to your group of people. Or and we can also teach about energy healing and ascension and speak about. We are not telepathic, but we can speak about telepathy and developing your ability. Mm -hmm. That's about it for me. Anything else? That's about it. We can... Uh, and with Om. And with Om. Um, somebody suggested that we send our appreciation and uh, to just do his team working on our Earth project. That's wonderful. That's a good idea. That's good. Very good. Just a second. Mm. Oh yeah, Om is one of the names of God, one of the vibrations of God, and by itself it doesn't do anything, but it unites us, and it unites you as you listen to that, you can Om with us, so we unite together in one vibration, one simple vibration, one simple note, and it's intentionally waving up and down, and that's how it is done, it's not a pure thing, it's kind of going up and down. And the intention you put there is what matters. Yes. We can concentrate on Dee's doing the team up there helping us out. Who's starting? Okay.
Can you play and channel at the same time? Let's 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 like yes play now. Like yes, you can play now.